Okay, okay, so let's do a speed run, a sheet metal speed run. We got a cameraman here today, so she's gonna help me film everything. And we're running out of battery as we speak. So, so let's go, let's go. Here you go. This is Fusion 360, everybody. You all know what this is. We're gonna draw something similar as last time. Uh, we might have some more features this time around, but not, not very big difference. So let's say that's our shape. We're gonna extrude it into a sheet metal part. Let's go like that and put on some chamfers. Go, 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 go. We're gonna need some holes because I really wanna show you guys that uh, I can have the automation to uh, do the correct layer mapping. And that's really nice actually. I'm not sure I need to define these really, but I can't help it. So let's make these holes. Well, let's make one of them a... Ah, no, no, let's not do that. Let's go a tiny hole, say three millimeter. So that's gonna take a small tool. And let's, let's put here uh, two more holes like that and that. Let's not define where they are. Let's take that one and make that into, let's say a and five threader hole yeah okay and then one last hole and we're gonna be done let's make it a countersunk straight hole uh, six and a half for m6 that's gonna be great we're gonna be happy with that we're gonna save it we're gonna call it one two three and then we're gonna export it to there sure and we already know our script is running in the background, Windows Power Automate. So let's just go ahead and select the side with the countersunk. And now we're gonna see, it's gonna ask, you wanna bend this part, do you want a worksheet printed? Yes, we do, because we wanna scan it at both machines. Right now it's calculating the material cost, that's where it gets the dimensions from. And it's changing the net lay names, it's doing a bunch of bunch of bunch of stuff. We're definitely gonna go through that in a upcoming video. I promise I've been saying that for two years, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna save it in the Amada database in a specific place, depending on where it was when I imported it. We're gonna hear the printer really soon, print a paper. It's gonna first move over to the bend cam. It's gonna make the bending program. Go, 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 PayPal, we, we're running out of battery and this is a speed run, so come on already. There goes the printer, the printer goes per. And we're being ISO certified, so I've added a bunch of stuff on the back side. But ignore that for now, we got our part, we got a picture, we got dimensions, we got our paints and stuff, yada yada. We're gonna press import there. All we need to do is scan the part like so. Bam, it's already on the table. We need to put it a bit higher up because we already have a bunch of traces in the our spoil board. We're gonna go up to there, generate recurrent drawing. Bam, all our stages or G code are now generated. Control F5 to refresh them. Let's inspect. It's gonna do that hole first, then it's gonna do these tiny holes. It's gonna do the hole for the M5, then it's gonna thread it. It's gonna chamfer that hole and then chamfer the hole for the M6. It's gonna do the outer loop. It's gonna chamfer the ups, top side and the bottom side. Okay, so we need a, uh, we need a uh, piece of material. Go, 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 go. Not telling And we're just gonna start our vacuum zone and we're gonna... And while that is finishing up, let's go load this. Go, 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 go. We're not gonna save the old. We're gonna scan it. Oh, we're gonna do that. We have three files with the same name. It was stupid of me to actually name it one, two, or three. Anyway, it's loading the bending program. It's pretty 
pretty much uh, the same setup as it is it recommending. It's always going to recommend this if the parts are smaller than 400 millimeters in diameter, not diameter, in width. And let's go minus three, that's typically what it is. This is three millimeters, yeah, it is. So Here we are, we're ready. All we need now is our part. the bottom side tiny holes probably three millimeters an m5 and in countersunk m6 This is a bottom chamfering tool. It's really old, I've been using it forever. But it still works just fine. Heart looks beautiful. Oh my god, it's so shiny. Look at that age. Mm-mm. How you like it? You like it? I like it. Let's go. It's showing us how to put a part in. We're just gonna follow that. So it's gonna be this way. And maybe we're gonna be quite close to 90 need because I already put in the negative three degrees. So we're going to be at 90.7, so let's compensate those 3 degrees. Not 3 degrees, 0.7 degrees. We're going to put it in again. And now it's going to be uh, probably overbent like, uh, no, it's actually going to be like freaking spot on. And uh, then we're going to, then we're going to put it in this way. And this is gonna be first try awesome. You see that? That's... So uh, let's see here. How did we do? We, we said this was supposed to be 40, depending on what size, so 43. Exactly, it's three microns away. That's, that's, I'm happy with that. And this should be 23 then. Yeah, 22.88. Is it? Yeah, it is. So that's our part. It's chamfered, it's uh, nice and smooth, no cutting edges, it's countersunk, it's an M5, we need to take an M5 screw! <laughs> we have an M5! We're just gonna take my word for it. So that's an uh, M6 uh, countersunk screw, as you can see it's Flush and nice. Okay, anyway, that's the threaded hole. The, the, the tap is really nice. So it's clean cut, very good. Awesome, we need to go. Thank you, bye-bye.